And we start in Lagos, where the army has been accused of shooting anti-police brutality protesters at a central location called the Leki Toll Gate. And with demonstrators speaking of at least 20 people killed at the scene, there's also been allegations of CCTV being shut off and of possible infiltrators joining the ranks of the protesters to stir up trouble. But such allegations have yet to be verified. The shootings follow the Lagos state government earlier having imposed a 24-hour curfew, citing deteriorating security concerns just after 7.30am in London. And uh, obviously uh, our time matches that in Nigeria. So the sun is coming up now on the scene at that toll gate with some pretty brutal images so do um, take care if you go searching for images on social media. Let's get the opinion now of Abedin Olasupu he's uh, joined the protest where he lives and is speaking to us from Ilorin which is the capital of Kwara State in western Nigeria uh, good to talk to you Abedin. I mean clearly you have been out protesting as well but did you ever think you would see something like this happen when people are there peacefully protesting? There have been, you know, there have been other incidents of violence, but in this particular case, they were peaceful protesters. Thank you very much for that opportunity to speak with you this morning. And I sincerely appreciate you for giving us your platform to really air our opinion. Sincerely, I never saw this violence coming. It is disturbing. It is embarrassing. It is pathetic. And... Sincerely, I can't find the right word in the English lexicon to really express myself. It was difficult for me to sleep since last night or this morning because I could see Velo, Nigeria. There is no probability that I'm not next to be attacked. So the Nigerian government unleashed army on peaceful protesters. And much more, these protesters who are peaceful are reciting the national anthem when the shooting started. The curfew was initially supposed to start by 9 p.m., so the shooting started 7 p.m., which was to say it was well planned because before the shooting time, they removed the CCTV camera, they removed the lights just to perpetrate this evil. There is blood on the Nigerian flag around social media, signifying the blood of innocent citizens who are to be saved by those who have sworn to protect them. I never saw this um, this um, 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 shooting coming and this violence that has erupted since yesterday. And, 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 and is this a fear that, that you speaking. have when, when you go out and protest? Is this a fear that you have? You said you don't know whether you will be next, that the people there to protect you could well be your undoing. Yes, because the government has not been sincere with everything since inception. The government told us that they have disbanded that, yet the day they announced that they were killing across different states in Nigeria. So governments are not matching their words with action. So it looks suspicious. There is no transparent process. Because how can you disband SARS and young men still continue to shoot? The word of the president does not really in sync or align with what the men of the armed forces are doing. And that is to show that there is no transparency in getting this done. You disbanded SARS, special anti-robbery squad. In less than one week, you initiated SWAT again, SW80. The SWAT initiation is ill-timed. It's not yet right for that. The Youth are demanding from you that they need a total overhauling of the Nigerian police force. Then they have the right, as enshrined in the Nigerian constitution, to march in numbers and protest peacefully. And as well, okay. in alignment with the ecosystem of the SDGs, which has to do with yeah. peace. I mean, and, and this was an attempt, if this brutal act last night was an attempt to, you know, a warning to, to, to say, you know, you cannot carry on the protests, otherwise, this is what will happen. Did it work? It will never work because this morning, as I speak with you, youth are out in their numbers again, marching and protesting peacefully. What the Nigerian government has forgotten is that there is a Chinese proverb that says, who, he who goes to war should dig two graves, one for himself and one for his adversaries. What they have done yesterday night will spark off anger among the youth again. They will go out in their numbers, and my prayer is that there is no vandalization of properties. But unfortunately, the government has struck the youth at where it pinches them so much by going in mass and shooting them where they are deciding the national anthem and protesting peacefully. So I'm scared about what is going to happen this morning. I'm scared about what is going to happen today. So that's the reason why I'm using this opportunity to call the attention of the United Nations, the attention of the European Union and the African Union to give me sharp light in Nigeria. The young person I've been doing. Will you carry on? Will you carry on protesting in light of what happened in the, in, in the last few hours? Will you carry on protesting, Aberdeen? Sincerely, yours. 
I am preparing now and I will go ahead to protest because this is the only thing that I own my, my country. I own the country of those whose blood um, those whose blood has been split. I owe them that loyalty to continue before them, to show the Nigerian government that there's the power in unity, there is power in the office of the citizen, and there is power in activating or cheering your grievances in the right way. We need to send a strong signal to, to the Nigerian government that brutality or killing or maiming people is not the solution to this protest. Aberdeen, thank you for joining us. Aberdeen uh, Olasupu, who is protesting where he lives. He's in uh, Ilorin, in the capital uh, of Kwara State in western Nigeria.